So just recently we saw AMD's reviewer guide for their upcoming Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs get leaked online. This guide had information pertaining to gaming benchmarks that also involved comparisons to Intel's Core i9-13900K as well as their own 7950X. I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on it since Zen 4 3D was something I was anticipating but not necessarily really hyped about. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. So yesterday, Video Cards posted an article where they were sourcing another tech outlet known as HD Technologia. I think it's a Spanish hardware site, but they leaked some pretty interesting information surrounding AMD's upcoming Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs. Now, whenever major hardware manufacturers send samples for upcoming products to the press for reviews, they'll also send over a reviewer's guide. This basically gives them information on product features, specs, and also their own in-house or internal benchmarks their labs attained because they want to give the reviewers some sort of guideline on where they should see their own numbers land. Sometimes they'll even include specific ways a reviewer should be testing the hardware, which most outlets disregard anyways, and that's for good reason because you should be sticking with your own testing methodology anyways. But their own numbers still give us some good insight on where performance for these upcoming products will land and how it stacks up against the competition. When these Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs were first announced, I made a video discussing AMD's own benchmarks which they presented at CES 2023. The numbers they showed just raised a lot of eyebrows and in my opinion didn't necessarily paint their products in the best light. I went over how some of the performance improvements they were showing didn't line up because it was performance we were already seeing with their vanilla 7000 series which led me to believe that these new 7000 x3d cpus won't be as fast as some people are hoping that they will be i've even seen some people have some outrageous claims of zen 4 3d being about 30 percent faster on average compared to raptor lake i really don't get how they land with those numbers but okay so let's take a look at these benchmark slides over at video card site the first slide looks like your typical marketing slide you'd see at amd's presentation but what I find funny is that this is the type of slide AMD should have shown during their CES 2023 unveil. They only showed like 5 benchmarks over there, whereas here they've got over 20 games. Now granted, not a lot of them are showing significant performance gains. Most are within 10%, which wouldn't even be that noticeable. However, there were a considerable amount that showed a performance advantage of 15% or greater. The next table is basically the same information as the previous slide but this time with actual FPS numbers. And here we can see that those results were obtained using a Radeon RX 7900 XTX. On average, AMD is claiming that the 7950 X3D is about 5.6% faster than the 13900K in their own testing. Now, something really important to take note of here is that video cards said that these results are based on a selection of games at 1080p and both systems were equipped with 2x 16GB of DDR5 6000 memory. The reason why this is important is because AMD is essentially giving themselves the best case scenario, whereas they are holding back the i9-13900K. Now, I know a lot of people will argue that for a fair comparison's sake that they have to do this, and this is how the mainstream larger reviewers will be testing as well. I personally don't care because in the real world, that doesn't matter. If you're a consumer and you're looking at CPUs at your local computer hardware store or you're shopping online and considering these two CPUs, one thing you'll have to consider is how much better Intel's memory controller is compared to AMD's. Along with that, AMD is also held back by their Infinity Fabric, how fast that can go. DDR5-6000 is basically the upper limit with Zen 4's memory controller, but with Intel, you can pair it with faster DDR5 ADI. We're talking about north of 7600 mega transfers with tighter timings, and that will seriously help the 13900K stretch its legs and probably put it over the 7950X3D. A consumer in a hardware store or when shopping online isn't going to limit themselves with the purchase because they want to make it fair for AMD. That, it doesn't really make sense, but I get why, you know, for science or for a benchmark purpose, they choose to level out the playing field there. So it's going to be interesting when reviews come out because for reviewers who follow AMD's guidelines and test both platforms with DDR5-6000 memory, we'll probably see the results line up with what AMD is showing here. And for those that also throw the 13900K paired with faster tuned ADI memory, I can see the 7950X3D losing to Intel. 
I'm going to circle back to this, but let's move on and take a look at the next table. In this table, we can see AMD tested the 7950X 3D with the RTX 4090, which we know is significantly faster than the 7900 XTX. And here we can see the gap widens to 6% between the 7950X 3D and 13900K. AMD also tested the non-3D cache 7950X, and we can see some significant margins, but there were a few exceptions, such as CSGO. In that game, performance actually went down, which could mean that the scheduler isn't properly delegating tasks to the right CCD. CSGO also loves high clocks, and we know that one of the CCDs on the 7950X 3D still has the same high clocks as the non-3D 7950X, whereas the 3D CCD is probably limited up to 5 GHz. For some reason, AMD didn't test all the games they tested with their 13900K comparison, but their overall average shows a 16% advantage, which is about in line where I had expected it to be. I really don't understand how some people theorized there would be a 25 or 30% performance improvement. Now, that's basically all I really wanted to talk about performance-wise for these CPUs. There isn't much point continuing on because, like I said, we'll have to wait until we see third-party independent benchmarks validate this stuff, and I think the review embargo is on Monday, but we won't know for sure. I can see this being looked at in a few different ways, some being in favor of AMD and some working against them. One advantage that these 7000X 3D CPUs will have is that they'll be trading blows with an Intel Raptor Lake CPU without having the need for faster memory since the 3D vCache can help eliminate the latency penalty and the need for faster memory. However, if on average the 3D parts are only about 15% faster than the non-3D parts, it's going to put them in a tight spot. Right now on Amazon you can find the 7950X for about $576. And we know the 7950X 3D is going to hit store shelves with a price tag of $699. So that's about 21% more expensive for about 15% better gaming performance. You also don't need a very expensive motherboard for the 3D CPUs because as I said, RAM tuning won't be as important and they also have a lower TDB so you don't necessarily need a board with a very beefy VRM. The Intel 13900K also goes for about $570 and can be paired with cheaper Z690 motherboards. The motherboard situation is something AMD seriously needs to work on. You can find a really solid Z690 motherboard for around $200, whereas decent options for AMD, you won't even find anything equivalent until you jump up about another $100 to $150 over that $200 mark. Sure, there are some cheap B650 motherboards, but they're really stripped down when compared to X670 or Z690 boards. Something else I wanted to point out was the 13700K. The 13700K basically offers the same performance as a 13900K and can be paired with faster memory and can be tuned as well. Right now on Amazon, the 13700K retails for about $420 or $400 if you forego the integrated graphics. That's nearly a $300 difference when compared to the 7950X 3D for very similar gaming performance, if not better. And the 13700K also offers really good multi-core performance. In one of the leaked tables, we can see AMD is claiming around 36,000 points in Cinebench R23. My 13700K stock attains around 31,000 points, and when overclocked attains around 32,500 points, so it's still a beast in multi-threaded workloads. So I personally see the 13700K as being a very good all-rounder CPU, and it offers really decent value. Then finally, we still have to wait for AMD's 7800X 3D, whether it's because they're waiting to accumulate defective dyes, or they're just trying to milk the early buyer, who knows what the real reason is. But if all you're after is just gaming performance, and you want to go AM5, then this will be the CPU to buy and will definitely kill off sales for the 7900X 3D and 7950X 3D. These are just some of the caveats and different factors you need to consider when taking a look at these modern CPUs. At the end of the day, it really just comes down to the individual's needs, budget, platform choices, feature sets, etc. I personally feel as if these 3D CPUs are what AMD should have launched with initially. They just don't seem like that big of a leap over vanilla Ryzen 7000 and also don't really seem to justify the price jump. Along with that, by releasing all these various different SKUs, I feel like you just risk cannibalizing some of your own parts and confusing the consumer. Nonetheless, I would still prefer a market like this one as opposed to what's going on in the GPU market. Here at least there is some good competition happening and the consumer has loads of options to choose from depending on their needs and budget. For now, we wait until the review embargo lifts and you'll find the answers you're looking for which should allow you to make a more informed decision on which CPU you need to buy. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. 
And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.